Maggie's on her way to pick up Inspector Faulkner now. All right, now you all know how important this safety house scheme is, but for it to be really successful, it needs to be promoted. Which is why we're having the pleasure of Inspector Faulkner's company. Vicky's in the paper. Mentioned in dispatches. All right. Bear in mind that this is the first time we've seen him since his appointment's been confirmed. So he'll be observing the 11th commandment. When you're new to a job, show him who's boss first up. Save yourself a lot of trouble later. VKC, this is Mount Thomas 306. Can you put me through to Sergeant Croydon at Mount Thomas Station, please? Yeah, copy that, 306. Yes, Doyle. Problem? I've got a flat tyre. So what are you calling me for? Didn't they teach you basic vehicle maintenance at the academy? Change it. I would if I could, boss, but there's no jack in the car. Someone must have taken it out and forgotten. All right, Doyle. What's your location? Uh, the corner of Lennox and Bridge Street. Should I advise Inspector Faulkner? No, I reckon I can still make it. I've allowed extra time. Jack's on its way. Thanks, Doyle. Nick? Yes? And make sure there's a Jack in the car, or two, if you should happen to know where the extra one is. I've got no idea, boss. Mm -hmm. Well, whoever borrowed it, put it back before I turn ugly. What did he say? Uh, what do you reckon with Faulkner and all this PR stuff he's towing up as it is? Did anyone own up? No way. I got out of there as soon as I could. Nick? Right. Look at this. You don't learn, do you? I thought you had enough of us last time. You informed his mother? Yeah, as soon as he was brought in. She's taken some time off work. Excuse me, boss. Sorry, PJ. Maggie just pulled up outside with Inspector Falcon. Oh, good, huh? And I phoned Bill Todd. Put him off till 12. Good. Keep me posted about young Damien. Jan Parker's had a rough enough trot as it is. Last thing she needs is a potential delinquent on her hands. Oh, I reckon he's well past the potential stage. I mean, the way he broke into that house, he seemed to know exactly what he was doing. Well, you think he's done it before? Yeah, it looks that way. Morning. Morning, Tom, or is it afternoon? Sorry about that. Unfortunate, but uh, still, we can't ignore the taxpaying public, can we? No doubt. Morning, all. Good morning. So, how late were you? 40 minutes. And he nagged me about it the whole way over here. I just hope he doesn't hold it against me for life. Hi, can I help you? Yes, Jan Parker. Uh, someone called and said you had my son Damien here. Oh, yeah, you want to speak to Detective Hashim? I'll just get him for you. Now, can I speak to Tom Croydon? Um, I'm sorry, he's busy at the moment. Well, is Damien in trouble? Look, why don't you come through? Speak to the detective. I'm not a small town sergeant anymore, Tom. And this is a bugger of a job. The territory's filled with landmines. But I'm determined to make it work, Tom, come hell or high water. Now, one thing I do promise is that I'll be fair. But beyond that, all bets are off, clear? Fair enough. In your position, I'd expect the same myself. Right, let's get down to specifics. The safety house scheme. It's going to be the best in the state bar none. Just between you and me and the gatepost, the Premier himself set up this scheme in his own electorate. He takes an interest. Is that right? Mm. You know what I mean? Just sit down, Mrs. Parker. It's ever since his no hope of father shot through. I know it was three years ago, but the older Damien gets, the harder he gets to handle. Too big to belt. Says I'm nagging if I try and talk to him. He's even got me back on the smokes. Given up for ten years. Do you mind? How serious is it? Serious? He was caught coming out of a house with someone else's video recorder. And he also assaulted a police officer. Oh, God. 
And we think this isn't the first time. He seemed to know exactly what he was doing. Well, they put him away? That depends. If he helped us out, the magistrate might take it into account. Helped you out how? Admitted to the burglaries he's committed, plus gave us the names of the people he sold the stolen goods to. Oh, last time he helped you with that business with the drug dealer at school, he almost this got stabbed. This is different, Mrs Parker. I can keep his name out of it. Oh. Mrs Parker, he's in it up to his neck. And next year, if he keeps going the way he is, he'll be 18 and chargeable as an adult. Now, that means prison. So, if he makes a clean breast of it, you promise you'll look after him? I can try and keep him out of a detention centre, yeah. Oh, OK. Let's have a chat with Damien, eh? It was a mate's place. The video belongs to him. Mm hmm No? Alex. Last name? Mitchell. Wrong. There's no one at that address called Alex Mitchell. I checked with the lady next door. He's moved. He used to rent a room there, but when he wanted to leave, they reckoned he owed them money, so they kept his video. He asked me to get it back for him, so I did. According to the lady next door, that house was occupied by Terry Fitzgerald, and he lives alone. And he always has. Just stop lying and tell them the truth. I'm tr not lying, Yes, you Mom. are. And stop trying to act so tough. You're I in trouble. I told you it's a mistake. In assaulting police will end up in a detention centre, Damien. Now wake up to yourself right now. We're trying to do the right thing by you here, but you've got to help us out first. Yeah, right. Like I helped you out last time, you mean, when I almost got knifed. And this is the guest list that you asked for. Those are the speakers in listed order. I'm meeting with Angela Todd late this afternoon to finalise the details for the barbecue buffet. So I'll have the exact menu for you by the end of business today, but it's very simple. Mm -hmm. Don't tell Mrs Todd I asked. I won't, sir. What you can tell her is that I'm bowled over by the job she's doing and I can't wait to meet her in person. I'll let her know, sir. Good. Yeah, we're very impressed by your contribution as well, Ross. Yes, Ross, very impressed. Goes without saying. Bill Todd's here. Oh, good. <clears throat> Bill, come in. Good to see you. I'm sorry about this morning, but uh, even an inspector has to take a back seat when it comes to protecting the public. No trouble at all, and congratulations on your appointment. Thank you. Tom? Bill? Sit down, Bill. Let's get stuck into making this the safest town for kids in Australia. The thing is, Damien, we got maybe 30, 40 burglaries and thefts outstanding from the last 12 months. I'd be right in saying that, Senior. Well, I reckon it'll be close to 37. That's including the outlying properties, of course. Well, that's not a problem for you, is it? With that old bomb of yours? That you shouldn't be driving. Someone gets through an open window, a locked door, just like you. There's a bit of cash, camera, video. It looks just like you. Damien, just tell him, please. You don't need a criminal record dragging after you for the rest of your life. You can see what this is doing to your mum. She doesn't deserve this grief. If we don't know which jobs are yours, Damien, we can't help you. If you cooperate, it goes on the magistrate's report. He'll take it into account. It could mean the difference between a juvenile detention centre and a good behaviour bond. It's all the same to us, mate. However many burgs we know you for, it goes on a clean-up rate. So which do you want to help? Yourself or our clean-up rate? Because I'm about to start shoveling unsolved burglaries all over you. Bastard. So, how'd you go? Looks like two of Damien's break-ins have been reported. Yeah, which ones? An old lady who's since died, one. Joshua Sinclair lives at 21 Station Street. Car CD player ripped off. We tried ringing him, but no answer. So? Of course, all the service organisations and the town council are right behind the scheme. Ah, well, that sounds highly satisfactory. Because I was just telling Tom the Premier himself takes an interest, so it doesn't hurt to be seen doing the right thing in the right places. Absolutely. I'm out to lunch. If anybody wants me, I'm at the Italian place on the High Street. OK, boss. How'd you go with Damien? Oh, he's making a statement now. Uh, four houses, three cars. So much for proactive police work. Yeah. Hey, uh, do you know where Joshua Sinclair? He runs the meatworks out on the North Road. When you're ready, Todd. Yeah, uh, you're right with you. Uh, Todd Pratt owns the place. Why? Well, it was one of Damien's victims, only he never reported it. Really? Yeah. 
Uh, listen, tell Jan Parker to give me a ring if she needs anything. Right, uh, he's flogged most of the stolen gear off the locals, so we'll get most of it back. Yeah, good. Well, that'll go down well, marching into people's living rooms and confiscating their TVs and VCRs. You buy electrical dirt cheap, mate. You take your chances. Help you. Mr. Joshua Sinclair. The one and only. What can I do for you? I'm Constable Patterson. This is Constable Doyle. Do you own a blue Subaru four-wheel drive, sir? Out the back. Fine. Have you had anything taken from it recently? Yeah, somebody broke in and ripped off the CD player and the sound system. Yeah. Those things are pretty expensive. You didn't report it. I couldn't see the point. You blokes, people are too busy to worry about a missing CD player. Don't tell me it turned up. Not yet, but we do expect to recover it. If you'd like to come down to the station and sign a statement, we can return it to you in due course. No, I'm impressed. Did you find anything else? Why was something else stolen? Oh, just a few CDs and some loose change from the glove box. Nothing important. So that's it for the formalities, Constable? Do you understand you're only out on bail? Yeah, no. You breach no. any of the conditions, we lock you up. You don't appear at the hearing, your mum has to pay the bail money. You got it? I said so, didn't I? Come on, let's get you home. Thanks. You're the one that broke into my car. Face looks familiar. If you'd like to read that through and make sure it's correct, please. I'm sure it is. Read it through anyway, if you wouldn't mind, sir. Uh, Mr. Sinclair. How are you? I'm Detective Hashem. Could you tell me why you didn't report the theft, sir? Well, I told this officer. I wrote it off, put it in an insurance claim and forgot about it. Right, so you did put in an insurance claim then? Well, no, not yet. I haven't. I mean, I'm going to. It's only a week or so ago that the car got broken into and uh, it's been a busy week yeah. for me. You know sure, how it is. Sure, sure. Priorities, I understand. Exactly. <laughs> Flat to the boards at the moment. Right. Well, uh, we'll be in contact with the CD player, sir. Thank you for your time. Well, no hurry. Like I said, I'd already written it off. Spend my life talking to liars. Josh Sinclair, what about him? You tell me. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Well, he manages Bill Todd's meat wholesalers. Well, I know that much myself. What else? Well, married, couple of kids, been in town about 18 months, wife's nice. That's it? Unless you know something I don't know. Hi, Chris. Hi, Angie. Hey, Angie. Hi, oh, Angie, if you're looking for your husband, he's having lunch with Tom Croydon and the inspector. No, I'm meeting uh, Ross Patterson. Find details on this do. Bill's anxious it all goes well. You never stop, do you? And thanks for Sunday, it was great. Oh, it's nice having some of my own friends at Bill's social afternoons. It takes the starch out of the proceedings. Drink? Mm, uh, gin and tonic, thanks, Chris. So, Angie, how are the kids? They're fine. Both enjoying school, doing well, thank heavens. Good. And how's their mum? Enjoying the social world? Mm, like the of it in Mount Thomas. You? Yeah, I'm fine. Lots of spare time. <laughs> Sorry, PJ, you're too much like my husband. Your hands might be in the right place. Be hard. Somewhere else. Oh. There you go. My neighbour tells me someone's been charged. That little ratbag Damien Parker, is that true? Now, why do you wish to know, sir? Well, I had a big blue with Damien a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. That old heap he's been working on was blocking access to the back lane. Gee, is that relevant to anything here, sir? Well, <laughs> it's pretty obvious this is his idea of revenge. Boy needs a good thrashing. Well, anyway, where's my VCR? Constable Doyle, would you be nice enough to go fetch Mr Fitzgerald's video machine from the evidence room, please? You are aware, sir, that this article is evidence and must be retained until the hearing. But I've got a friend coming round tonight to watch a video. Yes, well, that could be a bit of a problem. <clears throat> oh, it's totally stuffed. Uh, yep. You could certainly say it was stuffed. I'm not insured. Now what do I do? Oh, I really can't advise you about that, sir. Well, how did it happen? Uh, the offender was climbing out of your window, and when challenged, he dropped the video to the ground and made off. When challenged? That's right, sir. Well, then who challenged him? Uh, well, that would be, um... Me, sir. Now, room's been booked for me at the Imperial? Yeah, Ross has arranged it. Good. Well, with Bill Todd today, wouldn't you say? Yeah, he seemed to. Yeah. Special Committee of Council was part of my strategy. Todd seemed like the go for chairman. Big investor, got money and everything. That means he's got influence. Uh, it's Bill Todd, all right. Yeah. All right, well, I'll see you tomorrow, bright and early. Yeah, I'll be here. 
No, no, no. I, I did, how I can never you say touched, you're not responsible? I never touched the machine. Yeah, but if you hadn't challenged him... If I hadn't have challenged him, you would have made off with your VCR oh, in any What case. difference does that make? It's useless. Look well, at it. It wouldn't exist. Can I make a suggestion, Mr... Fitzgerald. Terry Fitzgerald. Who are you? I'm Inspector Faulkner. What the officer says is right. We can't be held responsible. But when it comes to court, that's a different matter. How do you mean? Well, the magistrate has the power to order the offender to pay you compensation. Find out when the matter's coming to court, and then you can speak to the prosecutor, and he'll raise it for you. Uh, it may not replace the machine, but at least it's some compensation. Thank you, Inspector. I'm grateful. At least someone around here knows what they're doing. Goodbye, Mr Fitzgerald. Goodwill, Constable. Up here for thinking. Yes, sir. Goodbye, sir. Could you hold the line, please? Boss, I've got Jan Parker on the phone. She sounds pretty upset. OK. What are you through now, Mrs Parker? How'd it go? There are some very unhappy people out there. One of them wanted to fight us. Helps if you turn the hose on. <laughs> you buy a five hundred dollar tally for fifty bucks, you're getting someone else's property. <laughs> PJ! What the hell did you say to Damien Parker yesterday? Hmm? He's in hospital, being beaten senseless, apparently. And Jan Parker's laying it at your door. Mum was at work. She's on the late shift at the cannery. I went out to get some milk. When I got back, they were there. Trash in the place. What time would this have been? About nine. I promised Mum I wouldn't be out late. You say the place had been trashed. What do you mean exactly? Furniture turned over. Drawers emptied out. Stuff in the kitchen all over the floor. Like in the movies. Like they were looking for something? Yeah. I mean, what's going on? I took some VCRs and stuff. It's mostly insured. Why all the aggro? Well, some people get pretty toey when their stuff is pinched. You're responsible for this. You said you would look after him. You promised. Jan. So, you disturbed them. What happened then? They grabbed me and started giving me a hard time. How many of them were there? Two blocks. Did you recognise them? They weren't Aussies, but... How do you know that? Funny accents. And they spoke to each other in wog. Not Itai, not Greek. You reckon they started giving you a hard time? What do you mean, belting you? Yeah. And, and they kept on going on about some stamps they reckon I took. There's the stamps, one of them kept saying. Said it sounded more like stomps. What happened then? I guess I passed out. Came to in the ambulance. Thanks, Damien. You've done really well. Mum will be okay, won't she? I mean, they might come back. Don't worry. We'll look after her for you. Like you did with him. That'll be a comfort. It's ironic, isn't it? We're about to launch a campaign to make Mount Thomas safe for kids and young Damien's had his face rearranged because you've been hassling him for information. All the stuff he's admitted to is checked out and he's hardly a kid. He's 17 for He's old enough to understand the consequences of his actions, So boss. are you, PJ. Next time, you think before you put a kid at risk for the sake of your clean-up rate. Look, if you think this is payback, why are they asking you about some stamps he knows nothing about? Now, maybe it wasn't Damien they were after. Well, you're the detective. You work it out. Look, boss... I want to find out who bashed Damien as much as you do. Then get on with it. What the hell is this all about? You're helping us with some inquiries, sir. I'm uh, sure Constable Schultz explained that. I've had far more informative chats with a garden gnome. Can we get on with this? Where were you between seven and nine last night? At home, Anyone why? Anyone with you? No. I was going to watch a video with a friend, but your clumsy colleague ruined that for me. Are well, you still angry about that, I assume? Wouldn't you be? Uh, yeah? Angry enough to want revenge? What the hell are you talking about? Yeah, he's not claiming. Yeah, you got to be joking. He'd make mincemeat out of me. What about a teenage kid? An easier target than the constable here, wouldn't you say, sir? The kid had broke into my place. What's happened? He's in hospital. He's been beaten up. Well, not by me. 
You were heard to make threats against him when he came to the station the other day, sir. Well, if he says I did it, he's lying. You might have had it done. Arranged it, you mean? Get real. This is Mount Thomas, not Chicago. Well, somebody did. Look, if I wanted to take it out of the kid's heart, I'd do it myself. Where's the satisfaction getting someone else to do it? Do you, uh... Do you collect stamps by any chance, sir? Stamps? Nah. Never sell the point. Why? Just a line of inquiry. Is he going to be all right, the boy? <laughs> yeah, we hope so. Well, thank you for your time. <clears throat> we'll uh, be in touch. Mm. Senior will show you out. Hey, how'd you go to the Parker place? Well, the place is a mess, but as far as Jane Parker can see, there's nothing missing. We can't be too sure until she's had more time to check. She's still pretty upset. Malicious damage, I reckon? There's plenty of that. Although the place looks like they were searching for something. Mm, Same with what Damien said. Not payback then? No, he was beaten up last night before you started reclaiming the stolen goods. Who then? Damien said the blokes are beating him up or looking for some stamps or something. Did you report anything like that? No. When we spoke to Josh Sinclair, he asked if we found anything. Remember? Yeah, that was just some CDs and some loose change missing from the club box, wasn't it? That's right. Hmm. G'day, Damien. How you are? How you feeling? How do you reckon? You remember Constable Doyle? Can we have a chat? I'm not going anywhere, am I? You remember you gave us a list of the stuff you pinched? I'm not likely to forget, am I? Oh, are you sure you told us everything? Yeah, I told you everything. Look, Damien, we're just trying to find out why they beat you up. We reckon it's something you took, something valuable. Valuable to them, you probably wouldn't have realised. Maybe it was hidden inside something. Yeah, OK. There was some junk stuff in the glove box of the car I got the CD player from. What kind of stuff? Nothing I could sell. I tracked it all in a box and forgot about it. Where is it now? What should I tell you? Last time I helped you lot out, this happened. Damien, have you got this stuff or did you give it to someone else? Come on, Damien, help us out. Listen, man, you're trouble. Just leave me alone. We promise whoever's got it won't get in any trouble. If you get the stuff to me, that'll be the end of it, okay? No questions asked. Damien, whoever's got it or whatever it is, remember they'll be in danger too, okay? Think about it, okay? Oh, come on. Do you always know what you've got in your glove box? I'm not the one who neglected a report of felony. Uh, CDs? Spare change? Parking money? Nothing much. Logbook? Mileage record book? That sort of thing. So nothing that would justify putting a 17-year-old kid with broken ribs, facial injuries and hospital down? I don't know what you mean. Where were you between 7 and 9 last night? Are you accusing me of something? Just answer the question. I was working here. Can you right? prove that? Morning, Josh. Problems, officers? They want to know where I was last night. Oh? What time? Between seven and nine. Oh, that's easy. He was with me. We uh, had some business to talk about. What's this about? They seem to think I was involved in beating up some young kid. Oh, that's ridiculous. Haven't you, uh, haven't you got something better to do with your time? I would have thought you would have been eager to help, Mr. Todd, supporting the safety house scheme as you do. I've already told you Sinclair was with me. Will that be all, or do you want to question me too? No, that'll be fine. Thank you. Talk about me, master, you slave. Who does he think he is, gosh? Shh. Look, I know he's been taking all your hard work for granted. Look, it's not just Faulkner. If it wasn't him, it'd be Tom or PJ. And who's going to get all the credit? Angela Todd, that's who. That's the job, love. <laughs> like if he says jump, I should ask how high. He's the boss. How'd you get on? Well, there's something going on with Sinclair, that's for sure. Okay, here, please. Tom's just filled me in on this business with the Parker boy. Yes, sir. And I've just had a call from Bill Todd. 
What the hell do you think you're playing at, PJ? Sorry, sir? Don't play games with me. I put a lot of work into the safety house scheme. I'm not going to have you stuff it up. I've just been pursuing a line of inquiry, sir. Which has so far resulted in one teenage boy in hospital and one I an influential businessman wondering why I can't keep my people under better control. Didn't realise keeping me on a leash was part of your job, sir. PJ, that's enough. Yeah, all right, all right. Angela. AJ. What's up? Oh, nothing. I just saw your car and the light on and thought I'd drop in. For old time's sake. Uh-huh. Well, um, that's not what you said last night. Don't get me wrong, PJ. I'm not suggesting we take up where we left off. It was fun while it lasted. Oh, so now that you've become a faithful wife, what are you doing out alone at night? <laughs> Haven't you heard of the 20th century, PJ? We are allowed out. Still doesn't you know. answer my question, Angela. <sighs> I'd forgotten. You're always on duty. Oh, yes, we never sleep. <sighs> Look, I just heard about that kid being beaten up. <laughs> you don't really s suspect Josh Sinclair, do you? <laughs> he wouldn't hurt a fly. No, I'm well, do you? Just casually. He's uh, dropped in to talk to Bill about the meatworks. In fact, they're supplying the steaks for the launch tomorrow. <sighs> Look, Angela. Yeah. Okay. Right. Come up to the house for a drink sometime. Hmm. It's me, PJ. We're still closed. Police, open up. You must be desperate. Yeah, for information and a beer if you can stretch it. Oh, well, one I can manage, the other, it depends. I was in here yesterday. You're in here every day. Angela Todd came in, right? And you put the hard word on it. Oh, Angela told you that, did she? Angie tells me a lot of things, we mates. You tell her anything? What's all this about, Paige? Did you tell Angie I was asking about Josh Sinclair? Look, I told you, we're friends. It's just between you and me, Chrissy. I heard that's what you told Damien Parker. Let's blow the bell, Chris. Listen, there's a lot of people around here that really like Damien. He's a really good kid. Just because he went off the rails a bit, it's pretty tough when you haven't got a dad around. He's not the only kid who grew up without a father. Now, did you tell Angie I was asking about Josh Sinclair or not? Oh, I might have mentioned it. OK, I told her. Just came up in conversation. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch. She's a bit young, PJ, even for you. Who was she? Didn't say, Max. Ah, that's why I didn't say anything. He was protecting her. We got her. the Chieftains, Leo Kotke, the Furries. The Furies. The Furies. Aha! Jackpot. What is it? It's a meat stand. You lost me there, Dig. <sighs> Meat inspectors use them. They check the carcass, grade it, then stamp it. So we lucky carnivores know it's been inspected. How do you know all that? My uncle's a butcher. So what's it doing in Josh Sinclair's glove box? It's a fake. Were you sure about that, Mr. Van Gals? I'm sorry, how do you say Matt. Matt. <laughs> you sure about that, Matt? Well, it's pretty good. But I'm certain it's a fake. There's only one stamp for this place and it's locked in my safe. I just checked. I can show you. Please. So you're the only meat inspector around here? That's right. So why would somebody want a fake meat stamp? Not only just guessing. Oh, you can try me. Well, if someone was taking the meat I'd already stamped and switching it with inferior meat, horse or scrub cattle or something, they'd have to stamp the inferior stuff, wouldn't they? 
Yeah, it makes sense. Then they take the good meat, sell it on the quiet for cash in hand. In the butcher shops in the city, you'd get the crook meat with the phony stamp. If you did this once every three months or so, no one would pick it up. And the stuff's probably mixed through a big consignment to make it less obvious. Tony? So, uh, when the meat leaves here, it goes to the wholesalers, right? That's right. If there's meat switching going on, that's probably where it'd be. We've got about a dozen wholesalers. Yeah. Anybody in particular? Not a clue. Could be any one of them. Damien robbed one meat wholesaler, Josh Sinclair. Ripped off his CD, emptied his glove box. So it's pretty clear that's where the stamp came from. Yep, but there's a problem. We can't just raid Sinclair's depot. I mean, he mightn't have any crooked meat there now. Who would have tipped him off? Two problems. Such as? Sinclair's just the Get manager, back. remember? Bill Todd's the major shareholder. You think he's involved? Well, has to be a possibility, doesn't it? A fake stamp could mean anything or nothing. What is there that's specific, especially against Bill Todd? Well, nothing at this stage. And we don't even know for certain the meat is being switched? No, no, we don't. Well, why else would they want the stamp? Look, they don't know we're onto them. And we can't do anything to make them suspicious. You're not suggesting I would jeopardise an investigation? No, sir. Of course not. How the hell did we get involved with Todd in the first place? Something to do with money and influence. This is all just hot air so far. We can't just ignore it, though, can we, sir? No, of course we can't. If a scam is on, and I agree with you, it's likely, then we need to nail it. So how do you propose we proceed? Well, once today's launch is over, I'll be out of here, and then you can go full bore. But not one single move until I've gone. And you, you'd better make sure that any charges stick. Understood? Well, you can hardly expect him to thank you for ruining his day. I wish. He has got a point, though. We've got no proof that Bill Todd's involved. And until there's another substitution, we've got nothing against Sinclair, either. Yeah, yeah, but what about Angela? Angie? You must be joking. Boss, she paid me a visit last night. She's trying to sound me out about Sinclair. Why didn't you tell me about that before? PJ, uh, Matt Sankowski's here. He needs to see you urgently. So, excuse me. After we talked, I started thinking and I come up with a name. Josh Sinclair. It's just a suspicion, but uh, I think he might be getting nervous. Go on. I've heard on the grapevine that he's got an order going out this afternoon. It's due to go out on Monday, but he's brought it forward on short notice. How big is this order? Very big. You heard what Faulkner said. Everything's changed, boss. Look, Sinclair's been spooked or warned. It's our chance to catch him in the act. I don't like it. If you're wrong... I know I'm putting my career on the line, but if we don't make a move and word gets out, we're all in it. Faulkner included. All right, get your warrant. I'll break the news to her and dodge the shrapnel, but you better be right about that shipment. Thank you. Such interest. Pardon me, Frank. Could you excuse us, please? Police business. It's uh, shaping up very well. PJ's been back to me. Yes, we've already had my instructions away. There have been complications. Yeah, and the Good turn out, isn't it? I believe you've met my wife, Angela, Inspector Faulkner. Ah, yes. Well, you've done a marvellous job organising all this. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. to search these premises.
our safety house scheme. That's why we're all here. You know, it's been an honour to have chaired the committee that, that planned this scheme to protect our kids. And now to explain to you in detail how it's all going to work, let me introduce to you a man who has been the driving force behind it, Inspector Ted Faulkner. Thank you, Bill. That one. That one. I don't know what you're talking about. This is all a ridiculous mistake. That one. Man, this could finish my business. You're under arrest, Mr. Sinclair. What for? I haven't done anything wrong. How about theft, fraud, offences against food handling? That'd make a much more attractive picture with one of these beautiful young children we're trying to look after. You might have think you didn't want to be photographed with me. <laughs> Mr. Todd, did you know that your meat works have just been raided by police and that illegal meats were found? Do you have any comment on that? I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. That reporter's just gone here. He's been tipped off. I wouldn't know anything about that. Yeah, well, I would. I want to see Hashem right now. But I'm... Then there's the matter of an indictable assault upon a 17-year-old kid. Oh, I had nothing to do with that. What, are you, uh, saying you didn't arrange it? There are these really heavy guys in Melbourne. I had to tell them the stamp had been stolen. They said that sorted out. And they just happened to know Damien's name and address, right? I don't have meant the kid to get What do you think they do, Mr. Sinclair? Ask him nicely? Buy him an ice cream? Now, I want their names and I want them now. Now, what about Todd? What about him? What's his part in this? So long as the place makes him a good profit, he leaves me to run it. You're saying he's not involved? No. Nor is Angela. Angela? Well, I didn't ask you about Angela. BJ? A word? Interview suspended at 15.30. Angela wasn't involved. So, who tipped off the media? That was done to make a fool out of me in public. Dozens of people work at the depot, sir. Any one of them could have found the Gazette. It wasn't me. It's not a good idea to play silly buggers with me, Hashem. I would have thought it was a good result for all of us, sir. Nice media coverage, and uh, we had to make a move in order to protect you and Sergeant Croydon. Get out of here. PJ can be a bit annoying, sir, but he's a damn good cop. No. One day he's going to miss. There won't be a lot of goodwill left in reserve, I can tell you that, Tom. Police work's a group activity. Cooperation and loyalty. Sooner or later, all the prima donnas come to grief. He said if you got the stuff back, that'd be it. No questions asked. I, uh, just want to let you know that we've got a line on the blokes who beat you up. Oh. 
Yeah, right. And I wanted to say sorry, mate. What for? Oh, I, uh, I stuffed up. I uh, feel pretty bad about you taking a beating. Shouldn't have nicked the stuff in the first place, should I? It's not easy losing your dad, mate. You'll shoot through too. No, no, he was killed. Uh, he went on a business trip to Lebanon and he, he never made it back. So I know what it's like. Look, mate, do your mum a favour, eh? Try and stay clean from now on. Holland, uh, if you need someone to talk to. Thanks. Everyone was saying how well organised it was. Even the woman from the press office in Melbourne said she couldn't have done better herself. Yes, Rose, well done. Take tomorrow off. <laughs> Thanks, boss. Isn't it the weekend anyway? <laughs> so what's happening with Angela? <laughs> Nothing we could prove. I reckon Sinclair suckered her for information. She didn't get any, so where's oh, the crime? Hold on. Here he is. It's our hero. We became aware today of a meat substitution racket, and in the space of one day, we have located it, raided it, and smashed it. One day, huh? <laughs> and I was present for each stage of the operation, and I'm very pleased to say that it all went like clockwork. Oh, can you believe it? I'd like to add something. That's why he's probably there. headed for the top. Unless PJ trips in the wrong way. Oh, no, no, I reckon PJ might operation. be keeping his head down for a while. What do you reckon, Mike? Yeah, PJ, who just who did alert the media, mate. Yeah, hey. was it you? Hey, yeah, yeah, I know nothing, all right? <laughs> nothing. Yeah. It's just as well Faulkner came out smelling like a rose. They grow